Hey guys, it's very nice to finally see you again. Now today's discussion will be an offshoot of our base management guides. A while ago we spoke exclusively on the largest of bases in each map, this time we'll be looking at the smaller bases of each map and discussing ways of creating a self-sustaining base. Come on up and we'll talk all about it. Hey guys, I'm so glad to finally see you all again. Yes, welcome back Mascara. A while ago, we had discussed ways to create a self-sustainable base with the larger bases in each map. I remember that discussion. Weren't you pretty much making the point that the larger bases should be one's main goal, as they are better for maximizing one's resources? To an extent, yes, but also smaller bases, though cheaper, would create lower profits and demand a lower rotation of survivors. But anyway, our discussion today will not just be on how to create a self-sustaining smaller base, but also which of the bases are best suited for such an endeavor. But wait, London, would you say that smaller bases could be a permanent option in the Nightmare Zone? Although I personally don't recommend it, that's something we can hash out as we go along. Let's get started. Junior. So just like with our first base management guide, we should first determine our necessary skills. Wait, didn't you already say that the three first skills one should select with the new community are medicine, computers, and gardening, medicine for infirmaries, and community upkeep, computers for outposts, and gardening for food output. Absolutely, but taking things a step further, before moving out of the original tutorial base, I would argue that one should first have, at the very least, utilities with electrical specialization, chemistry with one's specialization of choice, and agriculture, a specialization of gardening. Hmm. I'm guessing based on your previous discussions, the utility specialization is for the solar array, for creating baseline power, and chemistry is for use of a still, for crafting fuel and creating base-wide water. Exactly right. If one wants to go a step further, I would also suggest having a survivor with the mechanical skill for crafting toolkits. Now, small bases typically require anywhere from four to six survivors and are relatively small in perimeter with less slots to build on. There are, of course, outliers to this, such as Camp Kellenqua. But anyway, let's get into the bases of Mayor Valley. Wait a second, London. Is there a formula of some sort that you would recommend for a small base to be functional and sustainable? In order for a small base to be sustainable, one will require a large slot for the solar array, one small slot for an infirmary, one for a workshop, one outdoor small slot for a still, and one small or large slot for hydroponics or a farm. I will also stress heavily that having at least one food boosting modification such as fertilizer or the compost bin. So let's start with the country church. The church comes with one large slot, one small outdoor slot, and two indoor slots. The base also comes with a watchtower on the roof which will soak up one ammunition unit per day. Let's also not forget, in the Nightmare Zone, survivors typically consume 1.5 units of food per day, unless they have a personality trait that alters this. Also, with an infirmary, one will have a loss of 2 mets per day. Based on the formula alone, the country church will not be worth one's time. Although it only costs 500 units of influence and has a large slot, the base does not have adequate bedding and puts undue stress on one's ammunition, which will force having an ammunition outpost to break even. Also, from what I'm seeing in this base, London, there is not enough room to fulfill your formula, unless one outsources their beds from outposts. Plus, because one will likely be in the early game, chances are they won't have a signal antenna or signal booster for more outposts, and due to having an infirmary, two of their slots will be taken up by medication outposts to break even. There will also be a building materials upkeep requirement should hydroponics, a farm, 
or upgraded garden be put to use. Unless one can upgrade their command center quickly and find those two mods, managing resources to the point of breaking even or having gains every day will be difficult. In the example shown here, I got very lucky with an ally that was providing my community with three beds, which helped with morale and didn't force me to outsource for beds. I have one question. Why is it that you advise your guest to use a solar array? What's wrong with simply using a generator? It only takes up one small slot. The main issue I have with generators is not only do they require to be placed outdoors, they take up four units of fuel with every use, which in the early game is a rather heavy use. Now it can be upgraded so that only half of the fuel is required, but this is where the still would have to come in and compensate. Regardless though, the country church is not much of a solution beyond the tutorial home. Alright, let's look at the Mazera farm next. It has two large slots, one small indoor slot, and two small outdoor slots. You have your large slot for a solar array, one small outdoor slot for a still, another small slot for an infirmary, and one for a workshop, and the last large slot for a farm. This one seems to fit the criteria, London. Uh, perhaps. The Mazera farm costs 1,000 influence and requires 5 survivors. The soil also gives food-based facilities a 50% boost yield and comes with 4 beds. Automatically, unless one gets lucky with an ally providing beds, one will have to outsource their beds from an outpost. Assuming one has their command center completely upgraded, they should be able to accommodate 2 medical outposts for their infirmary costs, one material for the farm, and one for beds. Now, in my example here, I am also using a Red Talon workshop, which provides one unit of building material. However, my infirmary is only upgraded to the second level, which does not create a materials demand. Without the workshop, my materials would break even. Lastly, one of my survivors has a personality trait that reduces their food consumption by 25%. So if anyone is following this formula to a T, you may notice some differences in our numbers. But as I always say in my base guides, results may vary with allied enclaves. So overall, Mazera Farm is a pass, because everything is sustained to break even or be at it positive, and that is without ally bonuses. But you forgot to mention that it comes with a kitchen, which can provide a morale boost if one chooses to cook a feast. What would you say about this base defensively, though? Defensively, the base is somewhat on the low side, unless one perches themselves on the base silo. Otherwise, the base is like Whitney Field, in that it is cramped with little means to use elevation or terrain as a defensive advantage. But it is a relatively small base and should not regularly be at a high siege risk. I see. So what should we do next? How about the police station? It is similar to the Mazera farm. It costs 1,000 influence and requires 5 people. It has the same makeup of slots. Two large slots, one indoor small slot, and two small outdoor slots. I think we're pretty much going to arrive at the same verdict, London. These two bases are very close. The slots are the same. Bedding provisions are the same, though they require upgrading to remove the morale penalty, and it comes with a checkpoint, which is essentially a watchtower, which creates a tax on ammo. So it's pretty much the Mazera farm, but with an ammunition penalty? Um, sure, I guess. But defensively, it is far superior, and allows for four parking spots. The parking area is quite wide, and the roof is a very good spot should there be a dangerous siege on one's hands. Its placement on the map is not exactly favorable though, since it is deviated to the north. Meanwhile, Mazera Farm is more central. But anyway, both maps are on similar standing in terms of resource management, but Mazera Farms is slightly less taxing and more friendly. So last we have the Brewing Company, which is the biggest of this grouping of maps. If you ask me, London, perhaps this one should have been included in your large base guide that took place a while ago. You might be right about that one, Mascara. But anyway, this base costs 1,500 units of influence and requires six survivors. It has two large slots, 
two small outdoor slots, and four small indoor slots. The base also comes with two built-in stills, a tasting area, which partially acts as a lounge for morale boosting effects, and a built-in staging area that can be used to cover all maintenance costs. But it is also clearable if one chooses. The prevailing large slot can be used for the solar array, two small slots can go towards hydroponics, one for an infirmary, one for a workshop, and the last for bedding. Perfectly outlined. Now there are no built-in bedding amenities, so one will need the mixed effort of outsourced beds and built-in beds. Just remember that with the staging area, there are no taxes to one's materials. So sheltered beds, an upgraded infirmary, and hydroponics only have positive bearings one would require two bed outposts and two medication outposts to break even. With six survivors, one should have a surplus of food and this will ultimately aid in creating fuel for the still and making way for offensive measures and traveling means, that being gas cans. I would say this base is on the cusp of being considered one of the large bases, as it seems to function like one. Now London, I'm noticing that you keep on saying break even. Aren't you trying to create a base that has positives every day? Good question, Mascara. Unfortunately, the reality is that smaller bases, which are typically inhabited during the early game, don't have the greatest capacity to thrive as a base, but simply sustain themselves. The other limitation of this guide for the small Mayor Valley bases is that I'm demonstrating strategies one can use with the bare minimum. There is no herbalism skill to add meds, there is no signal booster or signal antenna to increase the amount of outposts, and there are no allies to provide bonuses. Though in this example of course I do have allies, but I'm pretending that they don't exist. For those that manage to find those things, they may be able to create not only a sustainable base, but a thriving one with the extra flow of resources or conveniences. I was demonstrating strategies with the bare minimum of resources and skills. As I had stated in my large base guide, bigger bases typically carry bigger payouts and will have a much smoother cycle of sustenance and growth in resources. Fair enough, London. And as you always say, others may have their own means of creating a self-sustaining base, or a thriving base, especially in the smaller homes. Are we going to discuss the other bases in the other maps? And how would you rank the small bases of Mayor Valley? I would say that the country church definitely falls last. Then the rural police station. Then Mazera Farm by a hair. And easily the brewing station comes first, as it offers the most options. And yes, we will definitely be discussing the other small bases in the different maps but that will take some preparation. Otherwise though, that is all this onion- And this onion. That is all these onions have to say. Thank you very much for stopping by guys, and I'll see you in the next part of our discussion. Bye guys, come back soon, okay?